February 22, 2020, 11, 22 p.m., I keep having dreams about a girl who went missing from my high school, I'm 24 years old and currently live across the country from my hometown, so I haven't really thought about high school for almost a decade. Recent events have got me racking my brain for those memories, every night for the past six nights, I've been having these dreams that appear to be retelling a story, always taking place in my old high school and always involving the same girl, Rachel Currid. Rachel went missing when I was a senior, and she was a junior, so I didn't know her very well. From what little I knew, she was pretty reserved and private, only associating with a select group of people in the school. Nobody knew much about her, except for the fact that she came from a wealthy family and that her older brother, Carson, had a history of troublemaking and violence at the school. Shortly before Rachel's disappearance, Carson was pulled out of school and sent to some kind of mental institution with no explanation. Some of the adults rumored that his violent tendencies became too much to handle for their parents. After he was sent away, Rachel didn't come to school for two weeks, the day that Rachel returned was. Eventful, to say the least, I remember the shock that I felt when I saw her walking down the hall for the first time in two weeks, and then the dread that replaced it when my eyes fell upon the bruises that littered her exposed skin and sunken eyes. Rachel's eyes never met mine, halfway through the day, a police officer showed up and pulled Rachel out of class. Apparently, the school faculty had reported her repeated absences with little response, but the physical state she had shown up in that day was enough for the police to actually investigate, that was the last time I ever saw Rachel. The last time anyone at school saw her, actually. She never returned to class after that, and a week later, she was reported as a missing person by her parents. They never found her, I remember hearing the news and fearing for my life, finding it hard to believe that something like this could happen in a town that was so normal, eight years later and I've tried everything to block those memories out, to erase that guilt that still gnaws at my stomach sometimes when I'm trying to fall asleep because I could have done something, but I didn't, and now here I am, unable to sleep because every time I close my eyes, I see Rachel, maybe I'm slowly losing it due to the sleep deprivation. But I can't help but feel like these dreams mean something, almost like she's trying to tell me something, last night's dream was of a class that Rachel and I had together in high school. It was surreal to see her alive and well in such a normal setting after all this time, the dream seemed to be moving forward in chronological order of my memories, and I can't help but dread what I already know is going to happen, I'm afraid to sleep, but I know I need to see her again, December 23, 2934 AM. I saw her again, but this time everything about the dream was different. It was dark and distorted, like something out of a fever dream, and the sound of loud screaming filtered in and out of my ears constantly. I looked around and found myself in an unfamiliar room, it looked to be some sort of living room adorned with expensive furniture. I heard a loud crash and looked towards the source of the sound to find. Rachel's brother? Why is he here? he screamed and was throwing things around the room. Rachel is there too, she's trying to stop him, Carson grabbed her by the neck and threw her into the glass coffee table, shattering it instantly. I stood frozen in place as Rachel writhed on the floor in pain, Carson breathing heavily in the corner of the room. A woman who I presumed to be Rachel's mother came into the room and slowly looked around. Without saying a word, she walked over to her son and gently grabbed his arm, leading him away from the scene, leaving Rachel there, alone, I don't know what to make of this dream. Did this actually happen to Rachel? Is this what caused Carson to have to be sent away? I have so many questions, nothing seems to make sense anymore. November 23, 2546 PM, I've been doing research on the Currid family all day, I couldn't focus on anything else if I tried their family is enormous and much richer than I thought. Apparently, the father is a corporate lawyer and is a well-known figure in the political world. The only public information I could find for Rachel was her academic awards and her pictures during current family events. I think she used to have a Facebook, but her family must have deleted it, I found almost nothing about Carson on the internet. No school records, no family portraits, no social media platforms, nothing. It almost seems like he was trying to stay out of the public eye, after searching around on her mother's Facebook page, I found a long message post from around 8 years ago. 
It was a statement made explaining why Carson was pulled out of school, and gave a sugar-coated version of his mental health issues that led them to send him to a psychiatric hospital in Pennsylvania. In the post, she gave the name of the psychiatric hospital, so in a moment of desperation, I took it upon myself to search up the number for the hospital and give them a call. Obviously, they couldn't tell me much because of confidentiality, but they were able to tell me one very important thing, Carson Currid is not a patient there. He has never been a patient there. They have no record of his file or ever meeting him, his parents are lying. They're covering something up, I know it. If he didn't go to a psychiatric hospital then where the hell did he go? What does this family have to hide, maybe I'm going crazy, November 24, 24.56 am, the dreams are getting more intense, more real. Fate is trying to tell me something in some twisted, confusing way, when I opened my eyes in the dream, it was dark. I saw the figure of Rachel stumbling through the forest, the overcast moon making it almost impossible to see, I followed her, but my legs were not moving. It's kind of like if I were experiencing it without fully being there, with no control over my body, eventually, she walked into a clearing in the forest that turns into a cliff overlooking the lake. This place felt familiar to me. There's someone there waiting for her, it was Carson. He looked distraught. I could barely hear their conversation, they spoke in hushed voices, Carson wanted to run away and skip town, he knew where his parents were planning on sending him as he overheard their conversation. He sounded, regretful. Like he was scared by the things he had done, Rachel wanted to go with him, she begged him to take her with but he insisted that she wouldn't be safe with him, she agreed to let him go on the condition that they would meet at that spot once a week to check in, I woke up in a cold sweat, Carson skipped town, his parents must have covered it up in order to avoid a scandal, if the timeline of these dreams is aligned with the actual timeline, that means that Rachel is going to disappear soon. I'm running out of time, I need to know the truth, but I don't know if I can save her, why is this happening to me? I think my next dream will be my last one, December 25, 2107 pm, I have never been so horrified in my life. There is no way that this is happening. I cannot believe or explain what I've just seen in my dream. I'm still trying to process if what I saw was real, I open my eyes in the dream, and I am back at the cliff in the forest. Rachel is there too, sitting on the ground. She looked scared. Carson appeared from the other side of the clearing, looking visibly upset. Rachel began to shake and stood up, he immediately began to yell at her, screaming that she was a traitor and just as bad as them. Rachel had told her parents where Carson was staying. They called the police and gave them the address. The police came to his apartment, but he climbed down the fire escape and came straight here, Rachel began to cry. She had been worried about him, he hadn't contacted her in days, and she was worried something happened to him, so she broke and told their parents, Carson didn't care, he was too far gone into his fit of rage to understand her true intentions, without warning he began to attack her. Punching and kicking her repeatedly as she begged him to stop. Eventually he grew tired and left her laying there, bloody and alone, I tried to scream for her but no noise came out of my mouth, I closed my eyes and opened them again. I'm walking down the hallway of my high school, everyone was staring at me strangely, and I didn't know why. I walked into the girls' bathroom and glanced up into the mirror, I was not prepared to see the face of Rachel Currid staring back at me. My exposed face and neck were covered in dark bruises, the hairs on the back of my neck stood up as I began to realize the situation I was in. This is the day that Rachel came back to school, and the day she went missing. I'm reliving this day through Rachel's eyes, why hasn't this happened until now, I stumbled away from the mirror, swinging the bathroom door open only to be met with a police officer, he gently grabbed my upper arm and told me in a low voice that I needed to come with him, I close my eyes and open them. I am in an interrogation room at the police station. They ask me about Carson. They ask about the bruises too, they know that I know where Carson is. They know he did this to me. I want to tell them what happened so bad, I want to tell them what is going to happen to me, but I can't. I opened my mouth but no noise came out, Rachel won't let me speak, I close my eyes and open them. 
I am back at the high school, but it's dark. It's so dark everywhere. I don't know how I got here, I saw a light coming from one of the classrooms, and I walked toward it. Carson is sitting in the middle of the classroom, waiting for me, he turned to face me, and the crazed look in his eye sent chills down my spine. He looked like a wounded animal, he told me that he knows the police were questioning me, and that he knows I told them where he was, I told him he was wrong, that I stayed silent. He didn't believe me, Carson reached deep into his pocket and pulled something out, it was a gun, he slowly raised it to the level of my forehead. He told me that I was too much of a liability, and that he was tired of hurting me, I stared him in the eyes as he spoke, but somehow I did not feel scared. I think a part of Rachel was relieved that everything would be over, with one last look, Carson pulled the trigger and my vision went black, once again I was seeing Rachel and Carson from a third person perspective, and I couldn't help but drop to my knees in anguish at the sight of Rachel's lifeless body, slowly and painfully, I watched Carson pick up her body and carry it outside. Leaving a trail of her blood behind him, he stopped in an area by the school's football field, underneath the bleachers and began digging. My eyes widened as I realized what he was doing, he was burying her there, I squinted my eyes shut as hard as I could, desperately needing to escape from this nightmare, when I opened my eyes again I was awake and in my bed, the first thing I did was run to the bathroom and throw up all the contents of my stomach, I didn't know what to do at that point, so I lay back down in my bed and stared at the ceiling. I didn't know if what I saw in my dream was real, but it felt so real that it left me with an unsettling feeling in my chest, should I, call the police, I didn't want to give them false information and make myself look like a lunatic, but if the information is true then maybe Rachel is still buried there, with shaking hands, I searched up the phone number for the police station of my old hometown and hovered over the dial button. I called in the information as an anonymous tip. It means they don't know who I am, but it also means I don't get any updates on the situation, I guess I'll just have to wait and see, December 28, 2746 PM, they found her. They found her body, I saw it on the news today. They dug her up from the spot underneath the bleachers, I don't know how to feel. I feel relieved that they found her body, but also so devastated now that I know what actually happened, I don't know why this happened to me. I don't know how it happened either. Maybe it's the work of a higher power or maybe it's just karma from the universe, I will never understand it. But that's okay, this will be my last journal entry on this topic, I'm so sorry, Rachel.